Yo, what's up everybody? Ed came out for Street Fighter 6 last night. I've been playing him a little bit throughout the morning and I think he's a lot of fun, so I figured today we could talk a little bit about him. So the first thing I noticed about Ed when I started playing him is that a lot of his primary fighting buttons are all on his punches, which makes sense because he's a boxer. But of course you have like your, your normal buttons, you know, you've got you know, a far standing heavy punch like Ken or whatever. But also your low forward type move is here and your sweep is also up here as well. If I set this to block stand only, you see that all of these crouching punches actually hit low. And comparatively, the kick buttons are actually these fast flicker buttons uh, and none of these actually hit low. So these are not special moves, but my mind almost wants to think of them as special moves, especially because the standing versions of these buttons are so similar to the specials that are here. It almost feels like an extension of them in a way. Let's quickly talk about his specials. So he has this fireball special. It's a two part move. So he does the quarter circle forward to generate the fireball. And then the strength of the punch button he uses to follow up with determines the speed of the move. Now this first generation of the fireball actually beats other projectiles. So if I have Ryu throw a Hadouken here, you see that actually destroys it. So if we wanted to do this, we actually basically win that exchange in that fireball war. And as you might expect, if the opponent uses an EX projectile, your EX version will be able to beat it out on startup. And you still have two hits on this fireball here. The startup of the EX one does take a little bit longer, so you, you have to preemptively put it out, but it is still really nice. On quarter circle back, you have this flurry of punches, uh, which I tend to think of as a combo winning tool. Uh, the two that I like the most are the light one and the heavy one. So on hit, I really like the heavy one because it knocks them down right in front of you. And if they do that neutral get up right there, then holding forward, you can get this cross up right here, which is super nasty. But if you do like a little micro hold back for just a split second, and that was even too long, you actually land in front. Right, just like that. It was almost imperceptible, right? Now, this light version I really like because its punches come out the fastest of the three. So if I have a read that my opponent is gonna do a drive impact, I'm able to break through the armor relatively efficiently by just buffering it. Now, the EX version has two major selling points. The first being that it's super cancelable. So you can get into a bunch of fun, super related shenanigans here, right? But the other one is that if I set them to block, uh, it's only minus three. So it is safe on block. Next we have the DP motion moves. These are just uppercuts. Uh, the most important one I feel like is light punch because it goes right in front of you. It has some sort of upper body invincibility because I've been able to get it out in anti-air, even really deep jump ins. So I think that's tight. The other two I feel like are mostly combo fodder. They have a, a lot longer startup and they also move him forward in this way that um, you know, if, if your opponent is jumping from particularly far out and you have a really good read, you can use these, but I feel like they're mostly just going to be used for combos. The EX version is an invincible DP, but um, importantly, just like in Street Fighter 6, it has 13 frames of startup, which is not normal for a DP in this game. What this means is that the opponent, if you're doing this in like a wake up situation, they can whiff a jab at like a meaty timing and even if you're doing this, you're buffering this as soon as you get up, the jab will have recovered in time and it'll basically, it's not an OS, but it deals with both situations, right? The jab meaties you if you don't DP and it's safe even if you do DP. So um, something to definitely look out for. It's a weakness of this specific character and this specific DP. Now on quarter circle forward and kick, you have these flicker strikes. And these are really nice as harassment and poking tools, especially because not only do they reach out super far and recover relatively fast for how far they reach, but if I were to, let's see, how do we do this? Counter, always punish counter. If you punish counter with this, you actually get a crumple. And you are able to combo off of this in a way that I haven't fully optimized yet. But, you know, it's important to know. It's, it's a high reward thing. The weakness of this being, of course, that if your opponent knows that you're going to do this and reacts with a DI. Here we go. Um, of course, you're in the middle of a special move and it only has the one hit, so they're gonna beat this clean every time. The other thing about this flicker strike though is that it threatens its held version. 
So as you can see, it summons the net that pulls them in and leaves you at plus four. So you're able to frame chap with a button like stand medium punch at that point. However, it is important to note that this version, this held version will still lose to DI. On a hit, the net does give you a bunch of damage. Right, not optimal, it's just something. But uh, the EX version is also just the net, right? However, all versions of the EX are, they, they just go straight forward. They don't, like there's not an up net, there's not a down net. He also has this duck move, which you do by pushing forward and two kicks. Uh, it is still a special, so you can special cancel it. It has two different windows, so you can either do an early punch, like that. You can do a late punch, like that. Or uh, obviously you can do an empty as well. Now, from what I can gather, both close punch and the delayed version have use cases, but I haven't been able to figure out when you want to use one or the other. So if you have an idea, feel free to comment down in the comment section below. This does allow you to get some fun anti-air situations. So if my opponent's jumping a lot and I'd anti-air with stand heavy kick, uh, then I can go and like go for a throw mix up or a strike mix up or what have you. Right, just like that. It's kind of a special, so we'll talk about it. He also has this held heavy punch, which will go straight through the opponent. Um, this still loses to projectiles, it doesn't go through anything. And if he blocks it, then we are plus four. I actually didn't realize it was that plus, I thought it was less plus than that. So that does mean that we can uh, frame trap into stand, heavy, uh, sorry, stand medium punch again. But in general, this feels like the type of thing that's going to be useful rarely in neutral, sometimes in combos, and I think the real utility is probably going to be just being able to delay this standing heavy punch by holding it down just a little bit. In terms of target combos, he has four main ones. The stand medium punch heavy punch target combo is one of your main combo tools and is also pretty nice because many things leave at at plus four, so your seven frame button is like one of your main frame trap tools, right? You also have light kick, light kick, light kick. But uh, there are a couple of things with this. First, I think you just use this. The startup is six frames. So if you don't have the luxury of frame trapping into a seven frame button, this is still available to you. But I think there are some weaknesses here because this move is not special cancelable. So even though this is three quick hits, if the opponent decides to drive impact you here, you pretty much just lose out, right? You also have this medium kick, medium kick, heavy punch combo, right? I think this is just a good like harassment thing. You can kind of just do this in a lot of spaces, especially because if I set him to block, uh, block all, you see this first hit is minus five, but the second hit is only minus six. So it's not like a major difference between doing one or the other. Um, if you do the last one, obviously you die and you deserve it. However, the first hit of this is special cancelable. So you can still cancel this into DI. You can still cancel this if you want into one of these rapid punching moves, right? You have options here if the opponent wants to DI. And the last target combo is this crouch heavy kick into heavy punch one. The big luxury here is that this is cancelable into super arts, whereas the other ones are not really. Other than, I guess, stand medium punch, heavy punch, but... You know what I mean? So people are quick to point out that Ed doesn't have any overheads. And I think I, that's not something that you should be super, super concerned about because he has so many good tools for just playing this grounded Street Fighter type game. And I think he can also punish people that are getting too complacent by doing things like charge net and whatnot. So I think he's perfectly fine at playing the strike throw style of game. The other complaint that I hear from a lot of people is that he doesn't really have any plus on block normals. Um, all of his jabs are a little bit minus, and the only thing he really has is the stand heavy kick, which is three frames. But if the opponent uh, crouches, then it just entirely whiffs, right? I don't think this is a super big concern, uh, mostly because there's a mechanic that just makes things plus in this game. So if you need plus frames, you just do the mechanic, right? Other than that, I think your goal is to, in this style of distance, like be harassing with like medium kick and these flicker strikes. If you're playing a little bit further back and the opponent wants to start playing that fireball game, then your ability to mitigate those with the startup of this and still put your own fireball on the screen, I think is really powerful for getting back in and closing this distance up again. If the opponent is getting a little bit too complacent, you can use these nets to pull them in and uh, enforce a strike throw game and he has really really good anti-airs between like 
uh, DP light punch, and also stand heavy kick. And if you truly do need to crank up the bullshit meter, you can always just do level two light super and then just run up behind this projectile. I mean, this is like three strike throw mix-ups in a row, right? His super arts in general are really good. He has this level one, which is just like a good combo ender, dump the meter type of move. Uh, the level three where he pins you up. It's a level three. You know what a level three looks like. And then the level two is obviously the utility super. This move is incredibly bullshit. I wouldn't be surprised if you're spending your meter on this like 99% of the time, honestly. Also, please don't think that was a real combo. But yeah, I think on paper, this character has tools that are fundamentally kind of simple. And it's a lot of the nuance that's going to make him very complicated. He has like a very high skill ceiling with some of the combos that he executes with like delayed duck and, you know, that style of thing. And also little intricacies like his EXDP being 13 frames of startup and things like that that you have to consider. But it feels like a simple game plan that you can push to the limits with a lot of technicality. And I think that that's, that's really interesting. So yeah, let me know what you think of Ed and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, peace.